I mostly do glass insects. I make some birds and some other things, but the, the thing that I really aim for is doing really highly detailed work, and especially if I'm doing real species, doing as true to life as possible. If I make some more fantastical ones and exciting, doing really detailed work and uh, making things true to life is like, I think that's like one way I can harness that OCD-ness to do something good with it. And, uh, you know, to really do something interesting. And it, you know, that also really sets me apart from a lot of people, I think. A lot of people don't do such detail or find detail in the work. So it's like, you know, there are other people who do similar to what I do and you know some of them do pretty good detail but I think that's one thing that I can really do that says you know this is my work as opposed to someone else's. I started working glass in 2000 but I worked at the furnace like the hot shop. I did that for about two years until I found out about flame working. I really wanted to be able to do my own work and have my own shop and it's really cost prohibitive to have a hot shop or to, you know, I would work for people and then I'd be exhausted by the end of the week when it came time to blow my own glass and it'd be hard to find reliable people to blow with. So I found out about flame working and, you know, that I could have my own setup and just do all my own work in a tiny little space for, you know, not unreasonable amount of money to get all of the equipment. I'm definitely out in the woods. My shop is about 100 feet from my house. Uh, I live on a dead-end dirt road uh, out in the, west, the hills of western Massachusetts. So, uh, you know, I go to the end of my dirt road and I can walk for miles through the woods. Uh, without seeing a house or a road or anything. There are bear and moose and beavers and all kinds of wildlife and of course lots of bugs. So I go on bug safaris pretty regularly but I also just, you know, I just like going out into the woods and away from things. But it's also very nice because in half an hour I can be to a nice town with galleries and some culture and good food. I, I think a lot of people are shocked by how small my shop is. It's an 8 by 10 shed and I've got a wood stove in there that the stove and the hearth takes up a decent percentage of it. So really my, my uh, shop is my workbench which is about 5 feet wide and 2 feet deep. I got my glass storage under there, my kiln, my torch, everything fits right there and I work in a really small scale. So. Having that small workspace works very well for me. I, inside, I do my packaging and photography and store my work, so I don't need that space in my studio. But it's just, it's very compact. It's, it's easy to keep clean, so I'm not distracted by clutter. And uh, it really works well for me. And it's nice to just be able to walk out of my house and over to the studio. Okay, so really my favorite thing now is making vignettes, which are little scenes. So today we made a mantis climbing a blade of grass going after a wasp. And uh, I'd say uh, individually mantids are my favorite insects to make right now. But I've been really interested in making the work more complex and making sort of little mini scenes. Uh, it's, you know, sort of a small narrative, uh, you know, nothing groundbreaking or earth shattering, uh, you know, narratives or saying, you know, whatever crazy stuff, but it's, you know, you look at it and you can see what's going on and you can kind of relate to either the mantis as the predator or the wasp as the prey. And, you know, you can see what's going on and you can sort of picture movement in it. And it also just adding all those pieces together just adds such a level of complexity and makes it more challenging and interesting than just making a single piece. Okay, well, I, I work soft glass uh, as opposed to borosilicate, which has a much higher coefficient of expansion. So it's much more likely to crack and break on me when I'm working it. Uh, when I get to the finer details, I don't usually have that problem because uh, those really thin, delicate parts don't crack and shatter as much. So when I'm working on the bodies, 
Uh, it, can, it can sometimes be a real exercise in patience. Uh, depending on what I'm making, some things really have a tendency to crack or even explode on me while I'm working. Some larger beetles especially, I have up to two or three hundred percent loss rate working on them. So I've found lately myself doing a lot more small, thin, delicate work, so it's less likely to crack or explode on me. Working soft glass sculpturally, uh, you always want to make the thicker parts first uh, so that as those cool down, uh, you don't go back to it so it's not going to crack on you. So I always make the thickest part first with all the little uh, connection points coming out of it and get all of my details in it. I have to keep it all warm while I'm doing that. So I get myself through that and then I can move on to making all the small, really finely detailed work and kind of add that on as I go. So today what I did first was I made that blade of grass and so I had that, that was going to be sort of the core of the piece. So I, I had the shape to it and I could see you know how I wanted to make the manis shaped to fit in there and then I could also think about you know what am I going to put up at the tip of that and then uh, worked out from there. So after I made that blade of grass, I made the wasp and assembled that, put it right on there and attached it. I made the mantis, it made it much easier since the mantis is the most expressive piece in there to sort of uh, build the motion and the emotion into it as I went. So it's really looking at its prey as it's going up there and to really try to make it look alive and in motion. So it's not just a stiff, you know, boring piece of glass. A big part of it is patience. Um, so I made these claws for the mantis and uh, you know, they have such fine detail on them that I need to go in there, I have some glasses with a bit of magnification in them, and I just need to breathe really steadily. Uh, I really try to just ground myself and do very slow, steady breathing so my hands aren't shaking, so I can hold things steady. I do have wrist rests, but you really, you know, your core self has to be steady in order to have steady hands. So, you know, I really just try to slow down, you know, just my general being and just not think about whatever crap might normally be in my head and clear it out and just, you just have to be totally focused on it to get these ultra fine details. It's like the spines on those mantis claws are almost as fine as on a real mantis, obviously not not quite there, but I really, you know, I get focused in on it, I focus my breathing and, you know, just move forward with it and, you know, just try to keep going and not get caught up in whatever mistakes or whatever, and if they happen, you just have to start over and go back to them. <laughs> Mantis is a, an insect, so obviously it has six legs, and it's got the main body, it's got the abdomen, the thorax, and the head. Those are the three segments of the bug. Uh, but with a mantis, the way their kind of, uh, the way their body is, the abdomen and the thorax kind of look like one, so it makes it a little easier to, to get that. So basically, you know, I build up the mass for that body and stretch it out into the right shape and then do my tool working on it with the knife to tool in the different segments of the abdomen on the underside and also to tool in the lines for the wings on the back. And then I went and did the first segment of each of the first four legs. Uh, all the while I had to keep the body hot. So making the main body, uh, both the thorax and the head, and then the first four leg segments, and then I can pony up to it and move to the upper body doing the last of the six legs and um, 
So that's its six legs and its body. It's also got some little grippers down on the tail that I put on there. They're a nice detail. I, I really just try to put as much fine detail into the work as possible to make it really interesting and a lot of different stuff to look at. Yeah, the wasp I made on there is a life-size wasp. So I made that, the abdomen for it, which is its butt. Uh, I made that like a series of encomos. I built it up one layer of glass at a time to make all those stripes. And just has the tiniest punny on there. It's like the thickness of a pin. So I have to be really careful with the heat and precise about where that heat is going so I don't melt it off and I keep it on center. And then after that, I built the main body and put the first segments of each of the six legs on there and the connections for the wings. And then I went ahead and put all the legs on and the head on, and then I added the wings. It's really important with the soft glass, the, the order that you put things together in so that you're working from the thicker areas out to the thinner areas and you get the details on there, but you're not shocking the thicker glass. glass blowing. So I lived in uh, San Francisco and uh, Berkeley, California for a year. And while I lived there, uh, I, I bought a handmade uh, glass bead from a street vendor and I was just totally fascinated by it. At that point I'd been doing jewelry making, uh, you know, no gold but some silver and copper and 
stone setting and you know I was interested in smaller things and that bead just really intrigued me and in how it was made uh, yeah, but at that point I didn't know anything about lamp working and so a while later we moved to Boston and I kept seeing these advertisements for uh, beginning glass blowing class through an adult education center and I just I wanted to do that I wanted to find out how that bead was made and I think around that time I'd seen some Dale Chihuly books and all this crazy glass he was making and you know I just really wanted to learn it and uh, my my wife who really helped me get into this talked her family and my family into getting together and signing me up for this adult ed class and that that really got me started I did that class I quit my day job and went to work for free for a glass blower at the furnace uh, for a summer just learning how to do it better and uh, you know it's all been I don't want to say downhill, it's been a good trip from there and I, I really appreciate her support to help me find what it is that I love to do and you know follow through with it and now here I am you know doing it really well and enjoying it, living the life you know.